Hi, everyone. Welcome to workshop number six, uh, the last workshop on Saturday today. Um, welcome to Lisa Ma from Creative Destruction Labs. Uh, we're so excited to have you here for a workshop that no high school student would really ever really get exposed to. Um, so it's really exciting. And if I was in your place, I would love to hear this kind of information. For those of you on the recording, um, if you have any questions, uh, if Lisa's okay with it, I can provide her email and we can go from there. Okay. So Lisa Ma is from Creative Destruction Labs. Since coming to Canada by herself at 16, she became bilingual in English in five years, graduated from the Sauter School of Business with a finance degree, built a team to run one of the largest hackathons in the province and led several tech entrepreneurial projects. Today, she recruits and supports startups, mainly in artificial intelligence, machine learning at one of Canada's largest startup programs and helps empower young women in STEM as a coordinator of the CDL Apprentice Program. Thank you, Lisa, for joining us today. We're so happy to have you. Um, and without further ado, you can get started with your presentation. Perfect. Thanks, Kaden. Hello, everyone. As uh, Kaden nicely introduced myself, my name is Lisa. And coming from Creative Destruction Lab, thanks for joining the workshop called How to Tell Your Story Through Your Website. I heard that you've been working on your projects for a little while, so I'm sure it's, it's been a, a pretty exciting journey. But just to kind of give you a quick background, not to repeat what Kaden said, but just to highlight the fact that I have been in your shoes many times, actually. So yes, I did organize one of the hackathons um, in the BC province, but also I was a participant, just like yourself, in three of the hackathons before I decided to organize one of my own. So kudos to you guys for working on this over the weekends as well. And I hope that I'll be able to support you and be of help by sharing some insights and learnings uh, from what I saw from the you know, websites that our startup uh, companies created as I, was, uh, as I worked at uh, Creative Destruction Lab the past few years. So why don't we just start with maybe from seeing CDL, Creative Destruction Lab's landing page. Um, just by seeing this, I'm actually really curious uh, to hear from you guys, maybe through the chat box, maybe just, um, you know, put in like keywords about what you think CDL does just by seeing this website. I'll give maybe like 15 seconds just to see if any answers come in and um, we'll kind of do the uh, overview. Just as the high level, you know, you're seeing this, um, of course, the menu items on the landing page and huge build something massive slogan and, you know, a video uh, uh, with uh, Chris Hadfield in it. So I'm not seeing any answers coming in. So I'll just give you a quick kind of overview of what we do and what you can tell from seeing our landing page. So CDL Creative Destruction Lab is a early stage, um, early stage program uh, for our deep tech and deep science startups. So what you can see from the menu items is for example, in the first starting with program and you see streams, mentors, companies, and at the very end, you see apply. So yes, you can always kind of get a sense that you know we are a program where mentors and companies come together. And the slogan, build something massive, uh, also encourages building something massive, uh, quite literally. And the fact that someone like Chris Hatfield, I don't know if you guys know about him, I'm assuming that you do. He was the first Canadian astronaut to walk into space and the commander of the International Space Station. And he is one of our mentors at CDL. So by just seeing uh, someone like that on the front page, you can sense that probably there's something to do with deep tech and deep science at CDL. All right, so now what we're gonna do is I'll show you some use cases, uh, case studies and examples from some of our startups and see you know, what we can um, get out of from those examples. So the first thing I want to share with you is a company called Shift. So Shift graduated from the CDL program last year. They are based out of Victoria in British Columbia and founded by a, a female entrepreneur named Nadia Taflo. So just, so this is a landing page and it is 
quite intuitive to see you know, what they do. Maybe I'm biased. You guys can tell me if you feel otherwise. But let's see. So the landing page, firstly, in case you guys don't know, is simply put a uh, landing page is a first page that you land on after clicking a link. So it's your first impression as a company. And the, and the purpose is to you know, provide targeted messages to the right audience and attract them uh, with something of value that they're wanting and needing and convert them ideally from visitors to customers. When we see specific components that go into this landing page and what's shifted so well is first of all, you know, they have this like big slogan, but also it's very succinctly on point. They only use five words to describe or get just people excited about what shift is about. It's the workstation for productive people. And right below that, you can see a one kind of sentence description. Sometimes uh, companies put value proposition here. But again, it's very succinctly written and it complements the slogan um, by elaborating what the product is and, uh, and what it is for. So here, I think one thing that I want to highlight is that, you know, we live in the attention scare society. So each word that we put on the website in pitch and also mark any kind of marketing collateral is very expensive. So succinctness is, is everything and conciseness is everything. And of course, you know, what is more important than a uh, clear call to action as a, as a business. So you see how, you know, the download now button is purposely put under after the slogan and the description and also in a color that really stands out on the website. And you can also see that at the top right corner, there's another download now button um, on, on the menu one of, as one of the menu items. And this is because, you know, the sticky menu, the navigation menu is, you know, remaining there visible um, as the users you know, scroll down and up. So anytime at any point of your kind of, or the visitor's user journey on the website, that call to action button is very easily accessible. And lastly, on the landing page, you also see, you know, what kind of looks like, you know, a browser slash an, an app a workstation, but this is a product overview right now. It shows as a um, static screenshot, but actually when you, if you go on Shift's website, you will see a quick demo video that they uh, run on their landing page. So we kind of saw, you know, some main components that go on the landing page in order for, as a company, uh, for you to tell your visitors what you do and why they should care about what you're doing. And if they're interested from the landing page, and that's when they'll go into the individual menus and just, you know, explore more about what you do and learn more about your company and your business. So we'll look at just three of the menu items. Uh, shown here. So the first is the apps and extension. Now, when you choose what menu items to display on your website and the order that you want to place them, it really depends on your company's product and also um, your business model. And in case of Shift, uh, because they are a productivity app, what customers really care about is um, the fact that it is uh, integratable with other apps that they use. And that's why they prioritize having that menu item as the first menu items on the menu. And just one more as the second menu item is a more comprehensive product demo video and a breakdown of the main features that the customers will get. And lastly, the teams. And uh, we'll spend a little more time on this team section because in the startup world, um, there's almost nothing more important than the people and team behind the business. And many Silicon Valley investors, for example, say that they bet on jockeys instead of horses. And what you can see from Shift's team page is actually quite light, meaning that they only have almost three components. So one, headshot photos, two, name, three, the title of the management team. And this works okay for a company like Shift because 
Shift's product is relatively simple in terms of the technological differentiation and defensibility. But it becomes a different story when we look at more deep tech, deep science startups like the one that I'm about to show you. Now, Orbillion Bio is a Berkeley-based uh, cultivated mid startup that I'm currently working with at CDL. So what they do is they provide um, optimized, uh, like a process to optimize uh, cell lines for cultivated meat companies so that they can grow this, you know, it's not synthetic. It's a real meat coming from real animal cells. But in order for you to, you know, uh, make this delicious meat, you don't need to, you know, slaughter, slaughter animals anymore. You can grow the cell in the, uh, in the dish and that's what they do. And this is a very deep science company. So what you, what you see on, on their website, however, is very similar um, to Shift when it comes to the Teams page, right? But it doesn't do as much justice of, for Orbillion to have such a simple kind of team page because again, they're a very deep science company and the founders come from an incredibly technical and qualified background. For example, so Patricia Butner, she is the CEO and she has PhD in biotechnology and she was also a senior scientist at, um, uh, at, a, at a, a vaccine startup. And we also see Gabrielle Samet, um, they have PhD and masters and they come from a very relevant background that enables them to work on this kind of biotechnology company. And I really wish, you know, they have highlighted that. I'm going to tell them, that, uh, tell them this because now after I was preparing for this presentation, I realized that this is really not doing them the justice. And, now we will see an example of another deep tech uh, science startup that serves as a good example or, or a better example. So here is Jiva. Jiva is a spin-off from the University of Washington and they're building an edge to cloud service platform. And this, this helps fast moving manufacturing companies um, to create more efficient supply chain using battery-free disposable wireless sensors. So incredibly deep uh, tech company and their team page looks like this. So it is different, right? It's more comprehensive. We not only see the name title headshot, but also a brief background, a bio about each of the founders and also linked to social media profile. And what's interesting about the relevant links there for both Joshua and Shyam, they also have links to their Google Scholar profile. So not sure if you guys know much about like Google Scholars, but this is that's where uh, you can see the different publications that these scholars have um, have uh, have published in the past. So this highlights, you know, kind of uh, the kind of extensive category and academic background that these co-founders have. And these are something that we really want to highlight for a company like Jiva. So now what we're going to do since we've seen uh, some of the case studies is um, we're going to have a brief kind of activity in terms of I will play uh, this 90 second, two of the 90 second pitch uh, video that our CDL deep tech, deep, uh, deep science startups have created. And just kind of imagine and guess what kind of company this is. And if you were to build a website for them, what are some things that you would like to highlight? Is it the team? Is it the product? Is it, what is it? So we'll play that activity, we'll do that activity and kind of hopefully have some discussions. And the first video is this one. It's called Visual Dawn. Imagine a world where. That's 
try it again. Imagine a world where vital information is always visible, so firefighters can focus on lives that need saving, even when their hands aren't free. More soldiers are reunited with their families because in highly dynamic situations, they can better assess risk from close air support or identify deadly threats that would have otherwise gone unseen. We democratize education by enabling teachers to keep students from around the world engaged as though they were in the same classroom. I'm privileged to be part of a world-class team of experts in biomedical engineering, material science, consumer electronics, and clean energy. Collectively, our team has worked on some of the most successful classified military programs to develop consumer electronics that have shipped hundreds of millions of users worldwide and discovered leading edge medical technologies. Further, we have deep expertise at the forefront of engineering AR and VR, taking some of the earliest technologies all the way to the first consumer. Our team is building a soft contact lens-based AR platform. While the idea of smart contact lenses isn't new, there really isn't a solution for reliably supplying these lenses with power. We developed a biocompatible form-factor agnostic battery, which cracks open the world of smart contact lenses. Our partners are supplying us with the display, comms, compute, and then we're also adding in some additional technology to mass manufacture our lenses using established manufacturing techniques. Even in its simplest form, our lens will save lives. Once we've achieved our vision, it will fundamentally transform how we as humans interact with our environment. The universe of the imaginable will become reality. All right. So that's one of the companies that's currently in the CDL cohort that I'm working with uh, called Visual Dawn. It's, it's a real out of sci-fi uh, type of company. So. I know that many of you will be watching this um, as a recorded video. So instead of having a discussion, I think we can uh, kind of talk about, so seeing from the you know, video, like what did you expect? And now I'm going to show you here, their landing page. It's very preliminary um, because Visual Dawn is actually a very early stage company. They haven't had, uh, you know, really the chance or the size of the team to really build out uh, a comprehensive website. So maybe from the landing page, just seeing from the landing page, it's hard to really, you know, get the synopsis of uh, what Visual Dawn does. Um, you know, probably the video did, did a little more exp explanation than what the landing page shows. But in the future, as Visual Dawn, you know, builds out their website, um, we can expect to have their teams and products uh, sections extremely well highlighted, right? Again, this is a very deep science, deep technology companies, company which has developed a biocompatible melanin-based battery and that use actually tears as elect electrolyte solution to, um, in, uh, to, to charge the battery. So the co-founding team comes from also a very technical background, and that will be something that uh, this company should be highlighting in the future as they build out the team section on their website. We'll see just one more example, and it's called Salo Sciences. There we go. Salo Sciences is a forest monitoring and conservation technology company with a mission to accelerate nature-based solutions to climate change by leveraging satellite data, ecological modeling, and artificial intelligence. Climate change is threatening our entire planet from our wildlands to our cities. Natural landscapes are at once the most at risk and most useful assets in this fight, forests in particular. But forest data are lacking. The three current options, ground, airborne and satellite measurements all suffer from significant cost, lack of scalability, and low accuracy. We need far better and more comprehensive data about our ecosystems and the nature-based solutions they provide to help solve climate change. The good news is we have this technology ready now. Our ecological AI models extract laser imaging-like attributes directly from satellite imagery, and our geospatial cloud computing infrastructure can efficiently process millions of square kilometers of inputs, freeing us from the shortcomings of current alternatives. Salo Science's first product, the California Forest Observatory, does exactly this. 
Our forest data is 10 times higher resolution and more than 200% more accurate than legacy satellite-based data, while being 90% as accurate as airborne LIDAR, the gold standard for forest measurements. But the forest observatory is current, easily updatable, scalable across the entire globe, and available on demand at a fraction of the cost. Government agencies and researchers can use these data for large-scale land management and monitoring and for regulatory and compliance purposes. The utility, insurance, and risk management sectors can use it to better evaluate risk and plan operations more precisely than ever before. All right. So that's also uh, a company in our current cohort uh, for the uh, climate specialization stream. And let's jump in to see you know, their team section, as you may have already guessed from watching the website. Again, uh, this company leverages um, background in you know, remote sensing and just a very deep knowledge in ecological uh, modeling. And this team did a really great job at highlighting um, the bio, the relevant uh, experiences in their bio uh, for all the co-founders, as well as again, you know, having those uh, links to their um, social media or any any kind of um, noteworthy kind of website that they're featured in. So we have seen, you know, multiple use cases, uh, case studies, as well as some of the um, videos and see how, you know, the company's kind of product and value proposition is reflected on their website. Just going back to our uh, CDL landing page uh, as a closing note, um, you know, as, as you are working on uh, helping build a website for uh, the, the company, uh, I really hope that, you know, this presentation was helpful for you just to, um, you know, identify what are the important components that go into building and designing a website. And also seeing many examples really help you pattern recognize. I think that's very important because there's no one size fit all. And depending on, again, the kind of products that uh, these companies are selling and the type of uh, audience that they are targeting, you want to make sure that you design a website that customizes or, or targets those uh, ideal audience for that specific business. So with that, I will close my presentation and you can always reach out to me and reach out to Kaden and XD Hacks team to um, connect with me or just find me on LinkedIn. But good luck guys and thanks for having me. Thank you so much, Lisa. It was a pleasure having you and that was such a such an interesting and unique workshop. Uh, I think I speak for everyone who's watching this recording and watching this live when uh, there's definitely a few cool startups in there. Um, there's some very interesting companies and even more interesting how this can apply to the projects that we're doing on a much uh, uh, less technological level um, than the startups that you're working with. Um, there's a lot of similarities that I think people can use for their projects um, and of course learn and apply. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah, of course. And I think, yeah, the, the basic principles um, are applicable to deep mm -hmm. science tech companies as well as a little more uh, less, you know, scientific companies. But also I'm assuming that, you know, so the participants that you're having at the hackathons, uh, your hackathons, you know, these are the kids uh, who dream of becoming entrepreneurs in the future or maybe joining like startups or just passionate about technology in general. So I hope, yeah, that this, some of the examples really excited you. It does excite me every day, just working with this kind of, um, you know, breakthrough com companies. And I'm really excited to see, um, you know, your team supporting a young future entrepreneurs. And um, I'm excited to see how they, how they grow. Of course. Thank you so much for the good wishes. Um, so once again, if there are any questions, um, go ahead and ask them now. Uh, and of course, as I said before, people watching the recording, um, I can of course get you in contact with Lisa if you have any questions for her. Ooh, okay, so I got a question from Karina. In your opinion, what is the best way to use images on your website? 
This is a really great question. I think on a more broader sense, uh, we're talking about what kind of visuals, any kind of visuals, it can be images. I see more uh, companies using videos on not only as like a kind of demo video, but also on the landing page. But I think what's important is for you to know what you're trying to communicate by using the image, right? Because it can get distracting, right? Because people are very visual. I think you guys all agree. Uh, and we just gravitate towards usually the visual components on the website. And if it's something relevant, perfect. But if it's not, again, it can be distracting. So based on you know what your company is trying to highlight um, if it's for example um you know a fitness company of uh, selling you know this different kind of uh kind of courses or equipments like you know there are two products right there are this kind of like courses and equipment so whichever that they decide to kind of focus on on the landing page um, they can have either the a photo or video of that, um, just really simple and on point. And on the kind of product page or in a call to action page, that's where, where they can have a little more, um, more, more images and more detailed images about like how each of the, for example, components of the equipment works and one like a little more detailed about it. So thanks for asking that question, Karina. Great. Are there any are there any other questions? Um, of course, this can relate to anything else besides the website. Um, uh, besides like the programs that we've introduced to you guys that CDL has, or even just some of the, I guess, if you're interested in some of the machine learning AI startups. Okay, again, Karina, thank you for being so proactive and posing your questions. So I have heard about the CDL apprenticeship opportunities. Would you be able to share more about what this entails? Yes, absolutely. So CDL apprentice program is a, a redesigned version of our high school girls program. And it is hosted all virtually. And it is for uh, women, uh, high school, girl students of age between 14 and 18. So what happens is so far, so this year we had six modules planned out, uh, four of them already completed, there are two more to come. And these are a very um, stream specific module, two hour module that our high school girls are invited to. And when we say stream specific, it means for example, the first AI, uh, first uh, apprenticeship module was all around the topic of AI, and the next was around agriculture innovation and also ocean innovation that followed. And basically, when they come to these workshops, um, those modules, you know, they get to meet with mentors who are operating in the field, as well as some of the entrepreneur founders who have gone through our CDL program and can tell you a little more about. Um, what they learned as an entrepreneur um, building a company in that field. So that's uh, what we do and we do it because you know there is a clear gender gap in uh, entrepreneurship and STEM overall. And this is CDL's effort to really bridge that gap by you know providing this kind of exposure and opportunities to uh, girls early on in high school. So again, if you're interested, first of all, go on the website and we do have an apprentice program page on the website. So just take a look at that. And also through Caden, you can reach out to me and I can tell you a little more about it. Of course. Awesome. Thank you so much for providing more information on that. For everyone else interested in the apprenticeship program, I've put it in, in the chat. And for those of you watching the recording right now, it'll be right below the link to the recording in the recorded workshop document that we've been putting everything on. So you can check it out there. I guess, unless there are any last minute questions, uh, I'll give it like maybe 30 more seconds. Um, I think that'll be it for today.
so yeah, someone asked, where can I reach out to you if I have a follow-up question? Um, again, either you find Lisa, L-I-S-A, Yeonju, Y-E-O-N hyphen J-U, Ma, M-A-H on LinkedIn and just shoot me a message or ask Kaden uh, about my contact info and uh, I'll be able to answer any of your follow-up follow questions. Yep, and, and on the document we have uh, not the recorded workshops document, but the workshops document, we have some more information about Lisa. Um, and so you can go refer to that to more easily find the LinkedIn. And then of course, uh, you can just DM me on Discord and uh, I can connect you with Lisa as well. Perfect, Kenya looks like we're perfectly on time. This was fun. Yeah, no, that's great timing, awesome. Thank you so much, Lisa. Um, this is a really great workshop. Um, and I'm so happy that you could help us out today and support us um, during this cool kind of experimental event. Um, thank you and your team. Oh, for, for sure. Me. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, so, I mean, participants um, I mean, people watching their workshop uh, recording, if you have any questions or anything after the workshop, just get in contact with me and I can put you in touch with Lisa. Uh, besides that, I think that's it for today. Thank you once again, Lisa, uh, for coming in. Uh, and yeah, and this, I guess, just final thoughts and then, and then we'll call it there. No, this was fun. Good luck, guys. And thanks, XAX team, for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Have a, have a nice evening, or I guess afternoon. Yeah, I will. Get to them. OK, awesome. Bye, Lisa. Bye. Okay, everyone else, um, projects are due on the 31st. Uh, we'll send another recap email tonight as we usually do. And yep, uh, I'll see you all later. Bye-bye.